downstairs and was setting up the camera that there was a storm brewing outside so I think part of our internet issue as I've told you before I have 400 megabytes or whatever it is coming in to my little condo and um, it's all that it is as large a bandwidth as spectrum will give me so I can't do any better than than what I'm doing but I, I can hear thunder behind me so there must be a um, a storm coming brewing up out of the ocean or on the ocean um, so I apologize for the quality I apologize for the cutting in and out I'm going to um, close this but I want to I just want to share with you and give you an update Kimberly will keep all of us updated um, on, the, on the Facebook page as to what's going on this weekend um, as we know more but as it stands right now um, Cameron and I are going on a piano tour, Cameron Cody. Cameron has been amazingly gracious to, um, his, several months ago he invited me to come out to Texas when I could, um, and I just invited myself to come out this week, and he's just been so accommodating, 
And as I know the program right now, or the itinerary, Friday during the day, he and I are going piano touring. And he said we would play lots and lots of pianos. And I said, do I need to bring my tripod? And he said, by all means. So I think that means that we don't know what we're doing, but there will probably be some spontaneous Facebook Live events involved, and they probably won't be um, many, but there may be two or three through Friday day. Then, um, God bless Mark Lowry, he, he certainly owes me nothing, and to think that someone of his stature, and I mean Cameron is well known too, so I'm, I'm very grateful for both of them. Um, but Mark connecting me to Kevin Phillips and uh, Kevin Williams, excuse me, Kevin Williams, and um, me being able to record in Nashville, and you you've heard the CD. I'm I'm just so humbled by everything that's happened there. Um, but Mark said when I was in Nashville, well, if when the CD comes out, I want you to to be on just whenever, which is his Facebook Live show. So. Here again, I just said, Mark, I'm coming to, to Houston to visit Cameron, so if it's convenient, we'll um, do something while I'm out there. So what he's saying is sometime, you know, Mark is um, just um, does things as the Spirit moves him, um, and I love that about him. He's, <laughs> he's one of the coolest people, got to be one of the coolest people in the gospel music industry. But he said, tell your people that it'll be sometime around noon. So that could be 11, that could be 12. But keep in mind that, that his time is central time. So for those on the East Coast, it may be 11, 12, 1, Saturday during the day. I don't know exactly what time, but if you'll just hang tight. And from what I'm understanding, Facebook has run another update, which has screwed up everybody's notifications um, I sent them a blistering note or message, which may be part of the problem, but they are really difficult to communicate with. Um, everything is so pre-formatted that there's nothing um, qualitative that you can give them. They don't give you an opportunity to do anything qualitative. So anyway, I don't know if it's what I said that changed everybody's notifications or if there was an update. I did notice that there was a lag in my Facebook um, maybe yesterday when I was going to the bench page. And generally when there is that lag, there is some update going on. So what I would do is just, just tell you um, when we go live at the, at, if, if you have your, your, pay, your, your page positioned where the, cam, the video is up top and the comments are below, Typically, in the top, or when you're watching, in the when you're watching the replay, in the top right corner, there are three dots, and if you press those three dots, you'll find something that says "Enable Notifications" or "Disable Notifications." So you can do that there. You can also go to the page where you follow "Enable Notifications." There, you have to turn them on and then enable them. There's two steps that you have to do to get the little ding. So, and we all want the little ding to go off, right? <laughs> anyway, um, I'm, I'm so sorry about the notifications, but let me finish my thought. Cameron just sent me a, uh, a picture of where we're going to be playing Saturday night, and I believe it's six o'clock central time Saturday night, this coming Saturday night. And we will be live um, on Cameron's page. And if I can go live on my page, I will. Um, yeah, Sandy, uh, thank you for that. If you're having a problem, just exit out of the page tonight while I'm talking and come right back in. A lot of times that will, whatever has gone on, um, I don't understand IT things, but um, I think it spools or something. And if you go out, it, it starts that process over so it clears whatever's in your cache or whatever it is. I don't know, I'm, I'm talking about things I truly don't know a lot about. Okay, so back to Saturday night. Six o'clock, I believe it's Central Time. Um, there's a gentleman that is a friend of, of Cameron's that is a, a real, has a great appreciation for music and he has arranged 
for several musicians to come, including me, and several singers to come. So we're going to, I believe we're going to be playing on four grand pianos. Um, I just can't imagine what that will sound like. Anyway, I think I'll be out of my league. I'll be sitting in a corner with um, something wet in my hand and probably water or unsweet iced tea. But uh, anyway, Saturday night, six, six o'clock, we'll be going live on Cameron's page, Cameron Cody Music, or our page at the bench with Briley, or both, I don't know. Um, maybe even Michael Pancake Music will share us if he, if he watches. I think he was on earlier. Regardless, um, then, after that, um, Sunday morning at 11.15, I will be playing the prelude music, if I understood Cameron correctly, and this is all subject to change, but I will be playing the prelude music at the 11.15 service at Chapelwood United Methodist Church, um, if my nerves don't get the best of me. And then I will be playing for the choir hymn songs. So I cannot believe that Cameron is trusting me to do that. So I am thrilled beyond belief. It has been so long other than our hymn sing since I've played for a choir to sing that it's, it's kind of beyond my dream and imagination to get to do that. So this is really a gift to me, guys, that, that someone of Cameron's stature and someone of our Mark stature would allow me to be a part of what they're doing musically. It's just just kind of way beyond anything I could have ever dreamed of. It's like Gina said at the hymn, sing a dream you didn't even know you had. Forgive me, y'all. I am parched. So, what shall we do? I've, I've caught, sort of caught my iPad out of the corner of my eye and it seems like it's flashing pretty badly and and I don't want to I don't want to antagonize anyone or or make anyone um, aggravated with trying to watch this in pain I don't know that the replay would be any better if I thought it would I just keep going um, Sandy Welch my sister tell me what I should do um, I'm gonna give you just a minute to respond I've got a lag time on my iPad so um, just, just let me know. I just saw it flash again. So obviously we're getting some pretty significant electricity outside. Um, I'm, I'm pretty grounded here. I'm not worried about getting shocked or anything. Uh, even though I'm really close to the ocean and we do get some horrific electrical storms. Um, so anyway, Kevin, I saw you said, okay, keep playing. Okay. All right. So this is what I turn, my turn to um, when I open the, the red back hymnal, um, and I love it. I do love this.
repeat that verse again. The old rugged cross on a hill far away. Kevin just said that this was Wednesday night prayer service for those of us who couldn't get out. And I pray that it is that. I really do. That's that's more than I could ever dream that, that the Holy Spirit would honor this moment. But I love those hymns. And you know I love them because of the words, the theology behind them. And I just wonder as I, as I play this verse, I'll try to play it a little slower. Would you just... Some of you just type part of the verse, like like a half of the phrase, on a hill far away, and press enter, so those words will come up as I play. Um, what a message! How, what a wonderful thing to meditate on, to think about. I come to the garden alone, and you know the disciples. I, I feel like that's us so much. The disciples had time to listen to Jesus when he helped them catch fish or when he was healing someone. But when he went to pray, they didn't have the energy to pray with him. I'm so guilty, so guilty of that. But knowing that that time led to, on a hill far away, stood an old rugged cross And on, on that metal cross, centered between two thieves, and I might get the theology wrong if I do, y'all forgive me, but centered between two th thieves, as he was dying, not focused on himself other than, well, he wasn't focused on himself. He said, Father, forgive them, the people who would kill him, because they didn't know what they were doing. But it, it, I believe he spiritually wrapped his hands, his arms around the thief on each side of him and said, yes, you can come be with me in paradise today, even though you don't even know who I am because you asked, you can come. Even though you don't understand all the doctrines and even though you've been what a wretched you've been your whole life because I'm saying, I'm putting my spiritual arms around you and saying, come, you can come. How, what a wonderful, wonderful, if, not, if we end on this tonight, what a wonderful idea to meditate on. To the old rugged cross, I will ever be true. Hmm. What, what wonderful words. Somebody somebody just write them. I'm going to play it a little slower. Um,
like your style Cause I never want to go back To my old life precious to me and I thought about the cup of water and I thought about you know what do we bring to the table to Jesus who gave his life for us and we bring whatever just flows naturally out of us I love playing music so I'm sitting down playing that comes natural to me and, and I hope that, that the Holy Spirit honors that. And, and if he honors that, if I bring that cup of water, that's all that he's asking. And he's not asking for me to play like Dino Carsonakis or Liberace or uh, Cameron Cody or Matthew Holt or anybody else. He's asking me to play like what he gifted me to play. And that's all I can bring. And that was a hard lesson for me to learn. And I hear people who don't want to play in front of me because of some skill difference. And I think, how silly. I'm just playing in front of God because that's what he gave me. And I, and I should never judge anyone else. But I, I got off of that, of what I want to say. I, I saw Miss Greta Horvitz's name come up, Horvitz's name come up. And, and I thought of, she's home every day, and what's her gifting? Her, she has many, and I've never met her. I've never talked with her on the phone. I'll, I may never get to meet her as long as I live. But her gifting is sewing. 
her gifting is cooking and she shows us all these wonderful lunch plates of her lunch that she got up way early in the morning before most of us knew there was a, a four or five o'clock um, in the morning part of the day. She would get up and cook and gets up and cooks. And I, I think of, wow, that just does my heart good because it takes me back to a time and it gives me, it causes me to reflect on some times that were just precious to me um, and those times now that are precious to me. But I, but I wanted to say, Miss Greta heard the voice of God and has done one of the most precious things that I think I've ever heard of. And um, she takes wedding dresses that'll never be used again and rather than stuffed in an attic, um, she takes them and she remakes them into burial gowns for infants um, who have died in childbirth or prematurely or early in life. Um, and I don't know that I'm supposed to tell this, but my, she, Kimberly's sister Kelly passed away several years ago and Kimberly is in the process, if she hasn't already, sending Kelly's wedding dress to Miss Greta, for Miss Greta to make that dress that would have gone to Goodwill or gone to the landfill or something, and she's gonna use that to bless someone at what has to be the most painful time of their life to lose a child. I know when Kimberly and I were pregnant with Madison, those last few weeks were absolutely miserable for me because we had a friend who lost a child during those last few weeks and I prayed more and just was so doting over Kimberly, scared to death that something would happen. Um, but I'm so thankful that Miss Greta's cup of water is just so, it seems so just simple, but what a complex, gift that that is when the Holy Spirit touches your mind and touches your heart and magnifies the gift. If just a cup of water I place in your hand, <laughs> do you get that? Then just a cup of water is all that I demand. Um, maybe God gave you a sense of humor and you feel awkward about using it. I challenge you to when you go to the next drive through before you pull off, tell somebody a good joke that'll make them laugh, not, not an off-color joke, but a good joke. So anyway, I am, um, I'm gonna quit. I, when the Holy Spirit moves on me, it makes me cry, and I'm, I, I, I don't mean to be, I'm not sappy, I'm not a sappy person, I'm a loving and caring person, but I'm not, not a sappy person, but I do wanna challenge you to whatever flows out of you naturally, ask God to just magnify it. And you know what happens when we, when we put a magnifying glass to something, it makes it larger, but we also see all of the little intricate details. It, it's wonderful um, to see all those little things that we miss. I thought today, and, and I don't listen to my own play very often, but this week, for some reason, um, I've been impressed to listen to my own CD. And it's hard for me because I'm such a, I'm, I'm a hard critic on myself, but I put my earbuds in and I listened to all those things that were not me. It, it was me as the foundation, but it was Kevin Williams just, I mean, producing the heck out of that music and that engineer in that studio doing all the magic that they do and they took their time and did it because that's their cup of water. If you ever sat in a studio with Kevin Williams, you would know it's his cup of water. Denise Dover, I see you on here tonight. I think about, yeah, your, your profession um, involves finances and preparing income tax returns for your clients and be diligent about that but that's magnified because you bought way too many CDs from me to give to your clients to bless them. You call me and, and just dig in about 
complex income tax issues so that you do the right things by your clients. You pray with your clients and you pray with people on here and you reach out to people. That's the magnification of that cup of water. I could go on and on and I certainly don't mean to make anyone feel like I'm preferring someone. I did exactly what the Holy Spirit put on my heart. So if that makes you feel slighted, I'm really, really sorry. But I pray tonight that you'll go to Walmart in the next few days or you'll go to some five and dime, maybe Goodwill, and buy a magnifying glass and put it somewhere where you can see it every day and say, God, take what you've given me, what just flows out naturally. I don't know what the right theological term is for that. Maybe it is calling. I don't know. Um, but it's a talent, and we know that the, 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 the parable tells us um, to use every talent we have and that God multiplies them. So how can we use them? We understand them through the magnification. So I just, I'm going to leave that with you tonight, that, that you will pray. It's a scary prayer to pray because there's a, there's a subsequent action that's coming as a result of that that will be required of us. But don't be afraid of it because it's absolutely liberating. It is wonderful to live in, <laughs> to live in the, uh, the, the magnification of that cup of water. Not for us, for our glory, but for, for the glory of God. And through that, if we win, if by telling a joke to someone and making them laugh at McDonald's at the drive through causes them to see Jesus. Maybe they'll never go to church, but if they see Jesus in that and it plants a seed that maybe they turn on a radio and they hear Mr. T.D. Jakes preaching a sermon and it brings back that laughter memory that that was a time of peace. You introduce them to Jesus. That's part of the Great Commission. I never, I will never be the person that knocks on someone's door and says, hey, I want to hand you a track. I admire people who can do that. That's not me. I can't even believe that I'm sitting here doing this, talking about Jesus, because my relationship with Christ has always been very private and personal to me. But think about this. It's not about us. It's not about magnifying the gift that's within us, our cup of water. It's about what happens after that. And that's when God gets glory. And that's what he wants. Do you get that? Can we really pray that prayer, God, magnify the gift in me, magnify the cup of water that you've given me. May it be everything that you want it to be. Oh. And if we pray that, then we pray this. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. I guess it's just going to be a night of crying. And then I heard my Savior speaking. There's that cup. Draw from my well that never shall run dry.
Lord knows. I wish a million times she was. This is what she would sing because if you're going to get your cup full, you got to come into the presence of the power. They were in the upper chamber. They were all in one accord. When the Holy Ghost descended, He passed us all. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. And I don't talk about that to, to um, endorse any particular denomination because for those of you who know me know what, a, what an extremely difficult time I have with organized religion. Denominations just give me a fit. But with that being said, I loved growing up in the Pentecostal church. I loved the altar time because I watched the Holy Spirit spiritually, physically, emotionally heal people um, while they were around the altar praying. Um, and those were some of the, it was times where I learned to, to truly worship God, worship meaning focus. Um, and this was, this was a song that, that I loved so much um, because I could belt on it and I can't belt anymore, but um, um, yeah, Mama, I don't think I know that I met the Master well enough to play it. But this is one that I really enjoy. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus
my face While the storms howl about me And there's no hiding place Neat the crash of the thunder Precious Lord, hear my cry, keep me safe, till the storm passes by.
say this is in the book of Zephaniah, but I'm probably saying the wrong book, and if I am, somebody correct me because you guys know what I'm talking about. The Bible says that God sings over us. You know, on the CD, um, I did, a, I did a, mel a medley called The Greatest of These, and I end with this song. And I wanted to end with this song for two reasons, because I love my daughter Madison more than anything that I could have ever, ever imagined. Um, I can hear her voice say, Daddy, and it stops me dead in my tracks. I have to feel like God has that same response when we say, Father, God. But Kimberly and I sang, you are so beautiful to me. You are so beautiful to me. You're everything I hoped for, everything I need. You are so beautiful to me for Madison at um, Ryan and her wedding um, because that's the way our hearts feel and our hearts feel that same way today. I'm, I'm not worried about the outward appearance even though I think she's, she's pretty special. Um, I think she's star quality, but the heart, I know, I know the heart that she has for people and, and how she values justice and treating people right. Um, I couldn't ask for more than that, for her to love her neighbor in an obvious outward way, the relationship she has with her friends. And I just want to end on that tonight to honor her, but also to honor God because I believe I believe the scriptures that he sings over us. And I wasn't going to tell this um, because I don't ever want this moment to be about something going on in my life. But, um, And I, my family's going to get really upset when I say this because several of them have called me and asked me what it was anything wrong. But I began to experience um, tachycardia. And for those of you who don't know, um, it's really high heart rate, heart, heart rate, your heart beats at a really fast pace. Um, I began to experience that Sunday and didn't realize it until Monday uh, that that's what it was. And my doctors told me not to worry about it. It happens. 
Um, I'm on medication to prevent that from causing a stroke. So all we have to do is worry about it being extended. Um, but I still, I, I had yesterday it broke for just a minute and then it came right back. And, and I laid my head on my pillow last night and I could feel the, rap, the rapid rate. Um, and it's disconcerting when it happens. Um, and I just, in the quiet of that moment, in the darkness, just raised my hands and said, Jesus, if you feel, if it, if, if, if it would be your permissive will, please, please heal me. I've got things to do this coming weekend and I don't have time to go to the doctor. And um, if you would, I can live with this if, if you choose not to. But um, about 2.30 this morning, I woke up and um, I have a mobile EKG device and if you if any of you have heart conditions and you don't have one and you have a smartphone I would implore you to get one it's a wonderful thing and it's wonderful to be able to show your doctor but anyway um, about 2 30 I woke up and I put the little thing on the desk and put my phone there and when you are having rapid heart rate this monitor goes like this I mean it's really exaggerated and that's enough to upset you by itself but um, when when I got up at 2 30 and I put my my fingers on the device and it started reading I could see it was just very small which is what it's supposed to be and the heart rate came in at where it normally is in the 60s and my, my eyes just filled with tears and it finished and it said 67 normal sinus rhythm and um, just what an amazing answer to prayer for me and I don't understand why God answers prayer sometimes and why he doesn't but I'm thankful that he did that for me. And I just, I just wanted to share that with you to say, however long it's been, however tragic it's been, however life changing or altering that it's been, please don't give up. Please hold on. There is hope and our hope is in the cross. Jeremiah says <clears throat> that I know the plans that God has for us, and, and it's, it's a hope, a hope for a future, a hope for good, not of evil. Um, but I, I wanna end on this one more time. Um, you are so beautiful to me. Would you just imagine, just meditate with your eyes closed that God is just standing before you and he's singing this over you, regardless of the depravity, regardless of the moments that you can't pray, regardless of the moments that your mind is on things that it's not supposed to be. You're everything I hoped for. You're everything I need you to be. Because through me, you are so beautiful to me. Mm -hmm.